Today I'm going to give you a quick look at Leonardo.ai, which is an AI asset generator for game developers. So you can develop things like items, environments, they have a couple different things listed. Some pretty cool stuff here. All of this seems to be built on the back of Stable Diffusion, which is a generator for images that is similar to Midjourney, if you've heard of that, or Dolly 2, if you've messed with OpenAI. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through some of the exploration I've been doing with it as I'm just sort of getting to learn the platform and how everything is laid out. So when we start up, there's a number of images you can generate, you can choose out of that. You can make your image dimensions pretty high. It seems you can kind of send that as far as you want, but it does limit the amount of images you can create, which is cool because this can allow you to get some bigger images. The aspect ratio, you can change that to be whatever you want. I really do like that. It does allow you to modify things on the left-hand side with this filter instead of having to go in and actually type out the prompt, which is one of the uh, sort of more frustrating things with Midjourney is having to custom, remember to type all the prompts out and actually specify the aspect ratio at the end of it. It does have something called guidance scale, which says uh, the uh, how strongly your prompt is weighted. And I haven't for sure figured out what that really means yet or how that's tweaked, but we're gonna go through that a little bit more in the video. I'm gonna give you some examples of some of the things that I've been trying to create and how I'm trying to prompt for them and how I have tweaked this. Um, your step count. So I think that this is basically uh, referring to the process that the algorithm goes through as it's being funneled back into itself to refine and provide ultimately a better end product. So think of this as like a uh, number of times your clothes are tumbled in the dryer or something like that, but code and AI and all that. So um, tiling, this is for more like texture generation it seems. Now image to image, you can upload an image here and then you can use that to basically be a prompt, which is really cool. It's really neat if you wanna bring some sort of character or some already existing, uh, an image of a thing that you already have, and then you wanna take that and use that to be what you drive the, uh, the new creation to be. So let's look here. Uh, thick seed, so that's the, uh, I'm not actually sure what this is yet. I'm gonna find that out. And then scheduler. Um, this is how, it defines how noise affects the generation. Not really sure on that. There's some really interesting names in here. Basically, I'm just gonna tweak that. Right now I'm using Euler Ancestral and I'm just gonna let that ride and we're gonna just kinda see how that works out. I will change that um, along the way, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to make some video game assets that are reminiscent of like a video game, like a Lord of the Rings video game. I really like Lord of the Rings, so I just kinda wanted to see what it would look like if uh, you know somebody Whoever owns the rights just like made a new game and I've just been sort of prompting for it. So I asked it to make um, some like uh, in virtual environments and I asked it to make some characters. Like I asked it to spin up a kind of like Mordor thing and that was okay. And uh, the, the virtual environment maps, these are kind of cool. Um, they looked really kind of the style uh, that I was looking at. But some of the details were lacking, but I felt like we could have we could have gotten over, over that, right? Um, if I go in here and I look deeper into some of my generations, um, let me go down here. I had a Elrond and I was working on a couple different Elronds and so there were some really cool ones. I really like this one. This one's really neat. Now there's a few others as well. And um, this is a, just a really neat example of where things can go. But I'm gonna show you kind of how the prompts um, change things and what sort of prompts that I'm working with and how that is all kind of working out. So over here on the left, I went to AI image generation. Now you may or may not have access to this. I got on a wait list for Leonardo AI and I just got access to it, so I've just started messing with it. So what I started doing here is I said, uh, Lord of the Rings, the Shire virtual environment, 3D vector video game asset. And there's a couple different options you can pick from here. So I've got Leonardo Creative, Leonardo Select, Leonardo Signature, Stable Diffusion 1.5, 2.1, and then Explore Other Models. I haven't hit on that yet. There's something called Leonardo Style and then just None. I'm not really sure what that does yet. And then there's something called Prompt Magic. And so everybody kind of has like an experimental rendering thing. Um, in Midjourney, I think they call it like a beta upscaling and so, um, or upscaling in, in general, and they have a beta version of their upscaling that they provide. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of show you what it looks like when I just sort of run this prompt with all of the different uh, models. So I'm gonna do Leonardo Creative, Leonardo Select, Leonardo Signature, 
for this prompt and we're going to kind of look at the um, differences. I'm also going to turn, uh, I'm going to do 1.5 stable diffusion and then 2.1 and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on prompt magic on the Leonardo signature and see just how that works. Now it, it does help you out because it saves the prompt right here and then it has the Leonardo signature right here. Now I did only get um, two images in my selection and that's fine. Um, I'm gonna crank that back up to four just for the next couple runs because I am gonna try to do something else. I'm gonna try to make like a video game um, asset like a weapon, like an ax or something like that. I'll maybe try to do like a Gimli's ax or something of that sort. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, they have a counter, shows you how long these things have been uh, spinning up and creating. And here in a second, we should start to see some things. Okay, so in Stable Diffusion 1.5, um, actually, let me just go all the way down to the bottom because it looks like they've kind of come out. Okay, cool. For Leonardo Select, let's take a look at this one and kind of think, say what we think about it. So, overall, um, a lot more detail, a little bit scattered out. Um, some of the some of this is kind of laid out in a way that doesn't make uh, sense spatially, but overall, kind of cool. Um, I do like the richness here. I think that you could definitely play with this to get some pretty good stuff. Um, let's go up one. This is cool. This focuses on just you know one place. So this is sort of like um, Frodo Bilbo's um, place. You know their house, right? I'm blanking on the name all of a sudden, right? And this one's Leonardo Leonardo Creative. They just sort of focus on that. This is Leonardo Select that generated that one. Um, I went over here to Leonardo Signature and it actually made like a whole map type thing. And so that's interesting because it actually went like a whole other direction than the other two. So there's a difference there. Stable Diffusion 1.5 is just this very abstract, rotten, whatever that is. Um, not really good, very kind of grainy. Um, not a huge fan. 2.1, a little bit different. Um, very kind of RuneScape sort of vibe. I appreciate that. That's very neat and vintage. And then the Leonardo Signature, um, and I believe this one was the one that I had that had the prompt magic turned on. Um, very cool. A little bit more abstract, but definitely a good mix of um, everything combined in here. Very neat. So I'm going to see what it does when I try to make an axe. And I uh, want to remind everybody, like, I could be prompting wrong, but I'm going to try to uh, just say what I think would prompt a game asset and just see how that works. So there's not a lot of documentation on what prompts actually yield results to generate these game assets, from what I can tell. Uh, when I rolled up to the website, they just kind of had just sort of, hey, I get in touch, learn more. You know, uh, there's a Discord that I could maybe find some help in. There's some examples, but the examples are pretty much just like, you know, hey, you can go here and you can look around. Um, and so there's not a lot in terms of like, hey, if you want to make a prompt that generates this type of thing that we showed you on our homepage, um, here's exactly how you craft it. So that's what I'm going to try to figure out here. So I'm going to try to make Gimli's axe. I'm going to try all of the styles again, and we're going to see what we get. All right, so I'm about ready to make a swing with the um, prompt here, Lord of the Rings Gimli's Axe, 3D vector video game weapon asset. Um, so that seems pretty clear cut to me. I'm gonna turn off Leonardo style for these and I'm actually gonna bump this up since I just wanna get a, uh, I just wanna get one good sort of video game like example, just one like icon, something I can kind of develop from. It would just be like in your backpack in a game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with Leonardo Creative. I'm going to turn off Prompt Magic. And then I'm going to go up all of the um, Leonardo selections. What I'm actually going to do is not worry about Stable Diffusion touching those because I think these are where the money is at for the actual game assets. But I'm going to go back around and I'm going to turn on Prompt Magic for all three of them and run all three of them with the Prompt Magic. Um, so I should have examples of with and without prompt magic and this is cool because I, I thought the the last one that I got was pretty interesting so I'm actually kind of uh, stoked to see what comes out. Alright so all the generations have gone through and so just to give you context so Gimli's Axe if you haven't seen her you don't remember it 
Um, I think we have two different versions somewhere along the line, but definitely either one of these would check out. And one thing that I've noticed with some of these uh, AI generation models is that they are not um, super adept yet at really building um, items in a really coherent fashion like this one has some non-metal blade decorative stuff where the blade should be and then a blade for the handle um, now uh, or you know something like this I mean this would cut your hand um, now this guy looks oddly like Ron Swanson and this thing is way too heavy to be across his brow so there, there's some closeness we did get a uh, some some axe over here uh, definitely not like a Gimli Lord of the Rings style axe. We did have like uh, a Frodo looking dude with a really awesome looking shovel and a can opener. Now, this guy right here, um, I think he's akin to like something like a Pharisee or like a monk, uh, like a battle monk who looks like Ron Swanson. This wooden thing is gnarly. So, yeah, I don't think any of the models particularly landed it. But what I'm actually curious about is if I change this to just say 2D uh, game asset it, just to see what I'll get from that. So I'm actually going to push for um, all of the things again. And I'm going to see if I can just get a 2D vector video game weapon asset. And then I'm just going to try to see if I just take weapon out of it and just video game asset. Um, and then I'm actually just going to say Lord of the Rings Axe, and I'm actually just going to simplify everything. And this is something that I do just to kind of start from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and see if that prompt works a little bit better. And we'll just move through that. Just test all of our versions, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the prompt magic again. And we will see what if this yields. I think that we're going to have um, maybe a little bit more success with the 2D and removing the name Gimli and just keeping Lord of the Rings in there. Uh, maybe this will help. I think we'll find out here in a second. Okay, so the results are back. Um, we do have um, some interesting stuff here. Uh, if you look along when uh, the bottoms are like uh, on Leonardo's signature, definitely a couple of uh, like definitely distinctly weird um, items. This is a goblin flying on a, the end of an ax um, down here. There's some cool inspiration to be gained. Obviously, these are like you know not like end states of items for the most part, but they're definitely really cool. This one um, for Leonardo's signature did not really pull. I pulled up some, it, you know, definitely not like even uh, resembling an axe. Just sort of Lord of the Rings stuff, right? So it's hard to kind of get it to focus on just you know an existing kind of lore and then just sort of uh, or you know even style of just um, stuff it, it kind of hit on it here and you know I think there was some some good stuff there now this is started to hit on some uh, some armor and this was kind of cool I like the armor mock-ups a little bit they were neat and I think that came out of Leonardo creative and so there were some some mock-ups but these objects are not really axes or, or weapons even they're just um, it's just kind of hard to tell what these items even are. So not to critique it too much, um, my prompt, at least what I showed you, that's definitely not it. I'm, I'm going to keep searching until I get the prompts that actually kind of that kind of hit home on this, right? So let's see. All right, we got uh, a couple of very interesting sort of Gimli looking dudes. This guy looks kind of like Pete Davidson. Interesting. Um, let's look down here and see what we got. Got some more Gimli looking dudes. Pretty cool. Um, good inspiration there. But overall, we're just we're just not fully hitting on what we want um, with just getting uh, the axe. But you'll see, I want to highlight that they don't really claim to be able to do weapons yet. They do claim to do what they're just calling items. Um, helmets, they seem to have a pretty good... Um, like a medieval helmet. They're actually giving a prompt example here. So I might just actually focus on trying to achieve achieve those. So I'm actually just going to try for items and in Lord of the Rings there is the Ring of Power. I'm actually just going to try to create a video game asset for the Ring of Power and then I'm going to say 
um, something like, hey, let me have uh, one of the like um, elf rings or something like that. I'm gonna say um, uh, dwarf lord. Uh, right. I don't remember exactly the the names there. And then I'm gonna try to generate. Um, couple different of these are random I'm actually just gonna kind of explore it I'm gonna say um, what's a good item Gandalf staff and I'll just see if it makes anything like a uh, wizard staff and I added um, video game item icon asset so I, I do want it to be like an item but also like an icon uh, in your you know in your game and then it's a it's an asset right so like like um, that's articulated in the entire like that that's what Leonardo AI is supposed to produce is m more directly game assets so I'm actually just leaving that term asset in there just by default may work may not um, I'm also going to turn up the step count for my next um, actually I think that maybe oh there you go all the way up to 60 and then for guidance, I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit as well. I'm going to see if that works. I'm actually going to run some of these again. I'm going to say um, uh, wizard robe. I'm just going to Lord of the Rings wizard robe. I'm going to see with that prompt waiting if we get anything. We're going to have a lot to look at here in a minute. So just hang here with me. We're gonna see what comes out of this. So wizard robe, and then I'm actually gonna say uh, Gondor soldier armor. So I'm gonna see if that generates anything good. We've got a lot going on here. So I'm actually gonna, let's creep down here and see if we've had anything yet. And we're gonna look around and it looks like um, looks like we did. Okay, so we had some things that are close to are close to a ring. Some of it is uh, very odd, so we're not really getting the whole circular thing down uh, 100%. We do have a, a Gandalf-esque dude. This is kind of cool. Um, he just has like a, a stick, like a wand. Let's see, we're getting some rings. And go back to the image generation. I'll look down here. Okay, so we're not getting a staff in this one. Although I will say, you never know what you're going to get. This is kind of cool. Like a little coin. Okay, here's, uh, here's probably one of the closer things to... What I was looking for is just a, a wizard robe, right? So here is just a you know a costume. This is these are items a wizard might have, and this is this is a wizard's robe. So that's that's pretty close, pretty good. Got a couple different versions of that to kind of inspire us in a certain direction. All right, so we got a little bit more out of the Leonardo select for the robes. The uh, signature did just go wild and just made an entire character and made some version of a Frodo um, with spikes. So still working there. And this one actually made like a merch cape of the Frodo with two spikes. So that that's interesting. We did get some Frodo and Sam action here. I guess that's Frodo and Sam. And okay, this is this is kind of cool. Uh, but not what we wanted. So Gondor soldier armor. Um, we're definitely not getting the Gondor soldier armor. Um, we we have maybe some concepts to work on, but overall we're not getting like a, a suit of armor. Now, okay, I think that we did have um, we do have something a lot better going on here. Now, I'm not really sure how Gondorian this is. It doesn't look all the way like, I think, from uh, the style that I've seen in the movies or anything like that. But, all right, we do have a suit of armor here, and that was with the Leonardo Select. 
So I think with um, select, we've seen some wins to be more in line with um, what we actually asked for. Now, um, for the wizard staff, this was, I put in accidentally put in wizard staff ring. So that's my bad. And so that's my, why it might've gotten a little bit twisted like that. But you would think that it, it might land on one or the other, but it is it is trying to uh, to mix it too. But I think select and creative, um, I think signature was maybe a little bit underwhelming there, at least for this. Um, and we're still we're still not quite there, so I'm actually going to go and see if I can do some research to refine the prompt and uh, test this out a little bit more. Okay, so I did go and clean up my prompt a little bit, and I tried going for some 24-bit art kind of style, um, and I started putting some commas in between things, and so I said 24-bit uh, art, Elvish Soldier Helmet 2D Vector Video Game Item Asset Style of Lord of the Rings to see what kind of came out of that, and so we did get a little bit closer to some more things that I would like to see. Um, this one was kind of cool. Uh, I did like this one as well. Now we're just kind of starting out. Now it's had elf, and when I said style of Lord of the Rings, I know that's open for interpretation, so that could be kind of broad. That one was from Leonardo Creative. Now for Leonardo Select, I didn't really like any of those. Now the Leonardo Signature it had this really interesting take on a sort of like World War One style helmet. I just sort of kept iterating through. Um, now this one was kind of more of what I would think of a sci-fi kind of uh, vibe over here. Now I did do some Gondor soldier armor. I did have better success after I started defining what that prompt should look like. And I did get lots of armor. So I'm actually pretty stoked that that came out a lot more the way that I wanted. So with these guys, you know, this one, you could clearly go in here and you could cut out some shapes. And you could start drawing some armor and building some stuff based off of these concepts. So this was a lot better, and I think that to the credit of Leonardo AI, I definitely cleaned up my prompt, and I just I pushed in a, a certain direction, and it it just it just worked out a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to trying to do um, uh, some more of the stuff that they have promised us said uh, or that promise but said that they could do. That's like buildings. So I want to see if I can create like a um, like a building, and I'm gonna try building, you know, going along with this Lord of the Rings idea, trying to see if we can get something out of that. So I'm gonna try to do a Shire Hobbit house building. I'm gonna try a couple different other um, buildings from Lord of the Rings as well. I'm gonna try like the um, Tower of Mordor, um, whatever it's called, the Sauron sits in, I can't remember right now. Um, Gondor and a couple other places. Let me show you what we already have here. So I'm already kind of liking this. I think this is pretty good. There's some neat little buildings here. And when I said building, it really lightened up and it just sort of pushed out to, you know, this is really cool. I think this is great. It's so even got a little like thing for water right here. It's got a coherent door and windows. Everything kind of makes sense. And uh, this one even has a little, a little person, a little hobbit stepping out of there. That is really cool. So that was from Creative. I think that one was great with that prompt and just to revisit that prompt I comma separated everything I said top down 2d game um, I keep hitting web search on accident Shire Hobbit house building style of Lord of the Rings this one is really good too this kind of reminds me of a clash of clans type of vibe um, this isn't really coherent but once again it's, it's kind of hit or miss so just keep spinning the wheel keep pushing the prompts and uh, you should have uh, something going on there now um, started to get into a little bit more of a kind of vintage style. Now this one was pretty good, although it has way too many windows. That was neat. Now, this is actually hitting more of like the top-down video game look that I sort of described um, when I first pushed for the ask. Now I asked for Gondor, and this is cool. I actually got like sort of a Pokemon kind of feel of like a video game scenario where you will walk through Gondor. Now. None of this really reminds me of Gondor, particularly. So I think there's definitely some work to be done there. Um, but this one, this one did stand out pretty good. This one was looking a lot more like um, some Gondorian stuff. 
although they were they're not they're not all the way there right so okay let's let's step through some of these neat pretty cool I mean it's all AI generated so that's really cool um, awesome let's keep looking so this one this was meant to be Rivendell um, and off the top I didn't really see uh, too much out of that one this is uh, definitely cool definitely kind of Rivendell-esque I'm digging that this is a neat little elf building very cool this little floating thing over here not really sure what's up with that now this is neat love this this is just I wish this was sort of coherent in a path that led away from the stairs and that this the stairs didn't lead into a purple river and that the stairs didn't twist around but hey there's always some good work to be done um, now let's see here now we got uh, kind of some just sort of broad stroke stuff but this does speak a lot more of Rivendell and sort of the elvish vibe so I think that's that's really good um, okay cool so I think that this checks out a lot better um, on the environments or at least a lot better more coherent um, environment drawing for the for, for the um, the building so I think that I definitely appreciate that that was that's definitely a good one and something I just found out that I didn't know is actually that you can go and you can search this home feed for kind of the style that you're looking at and you can look at like the trending new and top and uh, understand there may or may not be some not safe for work stuff in there but with that being said some of this is generated through um, a model called isometric fantasy so that kind of creates these sort of like floating environments with their sort of like um, 3d uh, perspective right or just sort of like the illusion of 3d so they got all these models at the top and I guess that's what you get when you look for the other models next to Leonardo creative and all those other things so like right here I went to isometric fantasy and so I can just say generate with this model and I'm actually going to go here and then with this model I'm going to go ahead um, and I'm going to say I'm going to push for uh, this right here and I'm actually going to add some words that I kind of um, gathered from just digging through things so I'm going to say um, isometric render I don't know if that's going to do uh, no. table top I'm going to see if any of those do anything cool. Um, I'm really looking for, yep, I mean, and there it is. So that's exactly kind of what I was looking for. So right here we have, yeah, isometric fantasy of this is kind of little environment where you could just sort of skip through and, and check out Rivendell. So that's really cool. Now what's neat about this is if I like one of these, I think I can go in here and I could say, hey, let me upscale that. And that should work that. Uh, should bring that to the forefront and we should actually be able to see something really cool out of that so let's look and see what this other one did yeah really neat this this model is definitely um, definitely creating some really neat stuff I think this is way way more interesting than what I was trying to stumble through before which I didn't actually know that these were here so now I do and this is kind of opening some doors that I didn't have um, what I will say about this one is it didn't exactly hit on. Um, uh, I'm going to add Rivendell Elven City because I'm not sure if it's really getting that I'm talking about Rivendell from Lord of the Rings. So I think it might be it might be getting it. But um, let's let's see if the second prompt actually comes through with more. I'm actually interested to see what happens with the upscaled versions that I asked for over here. I think this. Um, so that's really cool. Let me see about this. Yeah, neat. Definitely some neat stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and maybe ask for that one to be upscaled as well. And I'm looking for that to bring me a bigger version. Okay, not as much Rivendell energy as I would have liked, but. I'm going to start upscaling a few of these and see if they start coming out um, the way that I, I'm expecting. I'm also going to be going to ask for a couple of bigger images. And then I'm going to see what this says. Okay, so let's say note that this selected model has been trained at 
Oh, so it's been trained at this level, so I'm going to leave it at that level, and then I'm just going to upscale from there. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can get it to do um, Mordor Tower. And let's see if we can get it to do uh, Mount Doom. I'm maybe going to take out um, Isometric Render. Maybe it's already aware of that. I think that that didn't really change much. And I'm going to turn on Prompt Magic to just see if it does anything on top of that. Because I'm always um, looking to see what the experimental stuff does. All right, so come with the, some of those prompts that we just um, pushed out. They're looking really cool. So this is the one for uh, Mount Doom. And I think this is neat. Um, it shows Mount Doom like way over here and then just a little fire. Now, not exactly um, spot on for Mount Doom except for this one. Um, but then when I ran Mount Doom over here, got a lot more going on. That was That was really cool. So definitely a lot more volcano kind of evil vibes, but definitely worth spinning a little bit more. Now this one, I really like. I think this one is really um, maybe a little bit too much with the fires here, but definitely kind of worth a look um, at how this could be uh, this could be done. I'm gonna add, add some descriptive words in here. Mordor evil landscape. And I'm gonna say. Um, Orc Sauron. I'm just going to see if that does anything to add in. And I'm going to turn off prompt magic because I think that maybe went too far. We're going to see what, what happens with that. So those descriptive words seem to have actually really paid off because I've got um, sort of a character facing off against sort of a crazy landscape. Some uh, actual like dragons or birds. I've got like an orc here that sort of drifted into the, the landscape really interesting kind of look here and just adding the evil context seemed to really add a lot now this actually made it look like a uh, a promo for a game I don't know if we got like a book or a game cover or like what that is this one pretty neat um, overall hoping to refine these and then I'm still looking for my upscaled images to come through just kind of curious to see what those ultimately turn out to be I also just realized this, so you can actually take your prompt and then run over here into prompt generation and it'll actually come up with a couple different ideas for what you might want to do. So I had um, some prompts from the past that were like, let's see, um, this one. And I took this and I ran it through the prompt generator and it actually sort of like chat GPT'd my prompt and came up with new prompts. So it's like generated four alternate ones that I could use so I could just sort of pick from either of those and so like they they word it differently and then I can just hit generate on the one that I like and then that'll push out whatever I want so looking at some of these that I've already done this with already I've got um, a lot more detailed sort of um, renderings and that that I would I would kind of want I've definitely got the 24-bit uh, art style got that going for me so that's kind of keeping a little bit grainy still got a couple of weird things and just definitely some like some wording and stuff like that that's stuck in there that's not um, super good but some really some really neat visuals for sure now I'm just gonna take a look at the ones that I upscaled so this right here this is one that I upscaled um, that I could get. I'm actually just gonna download these later. Now, this one, also pretty neat. This is one of the Revendell concepts, and it definitely looks a lot better now that it's upscaled. Um, this one as well. This one was supposed to be, yeah, Rivendell Elven City. Um, it does hit the mark pretty all right. And this was meant to be the uh, the Mordor one. Now, I don't know. I think this is a little bit crazy. Probably shouldn't have upscaled this one. I think it's a little bit too much. But definitely seeing the quality that comes out of the um, the rendered ones, this is, this is pretty nice. This is a lot better um, than even I was expecting. So, very cool. 
But hey, that's Leonardo AI. I think if you want to go get a look for yourself, go sign up for their uh, early bird access. See if they'll let you in. Just go to Leonardo.ai and then sign up. I think there's some really cool potential here. A lot of really good inspiration that you can use to, um, you know, very rapidly iterate through and, you know, develop things out. I think this, this is a really great starting point. And I think that these models are only going to get better. And so if you get uh, more and more experience with the prompts that actually ultimately design things like this, then you're, you're really going to be close to the, you know, you're going to have a better understanding from when this comes online to be something that you can immediately ingest into a game engine or your designer and, you know, just just get, get off the ground and rolling. So this is just my first look. I'm going to do a lot more of a deep dive and I'm going to have some more videos on this. And if you've hung out with me, uh, this long. I really appreciate it and I hope that you, you learned as much as I did along the way. And uh, overall, thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later.